So here we are. I'm the Real Ted G, and this is the Real Ted G podcast. Today, uh, my series of people that are great at what they do is a special guest because uh, not, not only do I get the chance to meet uh, the husband of one of my superstar agents, uh, but I get to meet someone that is ex- has excelled in his field, and it's a field that I do find very interesting. I think it's even more uh, more difficult than my own field. Uh, so he he is actually Robert Gambari, and he's sales manager at Mercedes Southampton, right? Yes, thank you, Ted. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it. Oh, I I think it's a big deal. A lot of people that have been on on my podcast have said I've never done it before, and I'm going to do it for the first time. <laughs> so I got to convince them of that, and then I turn around and say I've never done this before either. So I'm doing it. For the first time yeah and you know what you kind of have it pretty set up nice and uh, it's nice and relaxing so i'm excited about what we got coming up to us yeah okay awesome so now okay so first question is uh how many uh, how long have you been do- doing what you're doing um it's been some time doing all this um if we're talking like retail side of things probably the last 10 years um but i've been selling cars buying and selling cars for the last maybe 20 years almost I've okay. been doing that. So as a kid, just, you know, Craigslist hunting, picking up cars off of Craigslist and, and trying to sell them on the side for a couple bucks. You know? So you always had an interest in, in cars or car sales? I wow. think it was just mainly just car sales itself. My uh, father grew up having car sales in him. Uh, his father owned a few businesses too as well. So the big thing for me was is just trying to get into that world and kind of relate to that world. Um, I found myself just starting to find that hustle and getting that little bit of blood, tasting in your mouth, saying, wow, a mm, little bit of money, flipping cars, being into cars too as well. And uh, I think it's more of the excitement of it that really got me hooked into it from my dad. So the excitement of the, oh, because I, I, I feel the same way yeah. and I almost never voice it to people. Uh, like I know what I find exciting about real estate. I, I mean, I, I love the process and I love the, the Please, we all know we yeah. do this for money. Uh, <laughs> I, it's the, it, the byproduct is uh, people like you and people like, oh, thank you, Ted, for helping me buy my first house. Yes, that's awesome as well. Uh, but what I always enjoyed, and I still do, I enjoy that that moment of the signature yeah. in that, in our business. I mean, similar to you know that that the buyer, you, you you got them, you got them the right car, and that you know they're just gonna be like, where do I, you know where do I sign? But I love that moment of the signature. I love that moment of the you know of listing obtaining the listing, you know that the kill. Yeah, and, the kill. So I know I have that that gene. That's like a, I call it. I call it. Certain people tend to have this very strange competitive gene, and it just makes you excel. Like someone could say, you know, you can win a pen. If you, you know, like it could be anything, run a mile in seven minutes or something. Yeah. For some reason, if I can win a pen, that makes it, makes all the difference in the world. You know, it doesn't have to be a million dollars, although that would be a nice yeah. product. But yeah, winning a pen makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So are you like that? I found myself more of like the hunt, the hunt itself. I like looking for it. I like trying to search for it. I like trying to acquire it, knowing that I acquired it where I was supposed to do it. And then not only that, but turning it into the profit and then getting into that side of the paper. For me, it was more of, hey, what I found and what I turned it into. And I always found that to be like where I always strive the best at. Wow. So you, you enjoy the, okay, the, the uh, actual process. Yeah. So if I was to translate it back it, it, to real estate terminology, you actually would really enjoy the process, like the prospecting end of real estate how to obtain leads even yeah. more yeah. than, okay, oh yeah. wow. Because yeah. uh, uh, we've had, uh, I've had a lot of, uh, I've been I've been through a lot of agents. We've had a lot of agents join us from the car industry, and everyone believes that our industries are similar, and 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 they are to to a point because we deal with the public, we deal with people, and we try to help them make decisions. You yeah. know, whether this is the right car and this is the right plan for you, or this is the right house. But I've noticed that people from the car industry don't tend there, there's some there's a glitch that occurs, and they they're not all they're not the same people that excel. You know, like they have like these you know great successes in real estate yeah. top listing agents in the state or you know anything like that and they tend to uh, you know, sometimes fizzle out or just tend to just get get onto like a little path of like okay I'm happy this way you know? yeah I can definitely agree with you on that because even being in the business for so long you start to see a lot of salespeople starting to be like wow the real estate money the real estate money the real estate money especially when things were on a little bit more of the downslope for us where they were thinking that you know what I can go and I can flip houses but the big thing is, is that our worlds, even though they are a sales world, there's two different sides of it that really kind of change the perspective of it. We are lucky enough to have a brick and mortar at the mm-hmm. store. So you have people calling, you have a product that you can sell, 
And also that somebody's eventually going to walk through the door. You're going to walk up to them and you're going to say, hey, how are you? My name is and welcome to. Um, I think with real estate and I see the struggles that a lot of salespeople that I would have in the automotive industry is, is a little bit of drive of trying to hunt for that prospect themselves. I would say it's more of a insecurity that a lot of salespeople have to overcome in themselves where that first initial impression, I would say that maybe for you, that would be door knocking is something that a lot of real estate agents I could see having a problem with and having that uncomfortable feeling of walking up to that door, knowing that you're going to get that first initial no. Correct. Yes. So when you're in the car dealership world, it's not always the first initial no. You get a lot of fake yeses. So when you get a lot of fake yeses in the auto world, you kind of know how to navigate around them as a salesperson. You have your objections, you work around it. But now you're getting kind of a straight up, hey, no, not answering the door. And I think that's where they're having a lot of trouble trying to transition from the automotive world into your real estate world. Have you ever had a salesperson come from the real estate industry? Um, I would say they're more not strong real estate people originally and they fizzled out as real estate and then they came into the automotive world knowing that they have a nine to five they have to show up to they have a desk they could sit at a phone they can answer and they know somebody's eventually going to walk through the door and manager sells a car you might get lucky one day and you get the the deal put on your desk so mm -hmm. there's a little bit of security that may come with it as far as like maybe like you said before you said you know it could take me up to nine months to get my first check in this Oh, right. In the you know, industry, and, it took me you're seven. Talking seven months. And you're talking seven months without getting paid. is a, It's a struggle for anybody that's going to be in the sales world itself. So I think when you first hear the seven months, I think real estate salespeople six months in haven't gotten a check is when they start realizing, hey, maybe I should be doing sales in another industry. And they come into my world or they go into the solar panel world or they're well, selling couches. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, I think that if they, the salesmanship that needs to happen in the car industry compared to real estate, if you're not cutting it as a salesperson in real estate, yeah. I don't like, I would not, I, I, I have no problem trying it out. Like I was, I was, I was fantasize about like a TV show that has like job swap and I'm sure they already have it. I just didn't get cast in it. You know, like, like that would be pretty cool to do, to do what you do for a week or to do like, you know, completely different industry for a week. I mean, obviously I can't be a surgeon. That would be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, but, but it would be kind of cool. And I, I would also enjoy watching what happens if someone tries to do what I do for a week. You know, yeah. we, we, yeah. we have a, a lot. I, I, I enjoy this field. I wouldn't be here. I mean, you have to enjoy yours too. I wouldn't be here 20 years later if, you know, and still still doing a lot of the same things, you know, listing and selling homes. But also obviously 10 years ago, I uh, decided to really take, take on training and cultivating agents as well. And that brings a whole whole other side side to it in so real estate. Twenty years of doing this. Yeah, twenty years. It'll be twenty years. Wait, what's today's date? Uh, it's been twenty years and two weeks. Twenty years and two yeah, weeks. Yeah, August third, I was licensed. So when you started day one, did you ever see yourself twenty years from now being like, "Hey, man, I'm this guy now. Like, this is what I do. This is my hustle, and like, it's like naturally pours out of you." You know, I did not. Uh, that's so interesting. I always, I, I actually give guests uh, uh, an opportunity to ask three questions to me, but that's a great question. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to be. Because <laughs> my, my original mentor, manager, her, her, name, her name was Patty, and uh, you know, she had been doing it a while. She had trained, she had trained for a corporate, she, you know, she had done a lot. And, you know, I saw, I saw her, she was obviously older uh, that, than I was in my 20s. And I, I thought, oh, yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to be showing houses and talking to clients 20 years from now yeah. you know even 10 years from now might be like maybe something a little different hey listen everyone gets into real estate eventually they think oh i'll just own my own office because that's the easy way to do it and well anyway that's a whole different topic but no you know i really did and i'm so happy that you asked that question that's a funny fun question to ask because uh i would say with 20 years experience you know and it's something that I expressed to Monica too as well. And it's something that I had to figure out in my industry too. And you said it just before is, is that mentor. And it's usually just going to be somebody that's well experienced in the field. Now, when you got your mentor, did you see the light switch kind of hit you where it was just like, Hey, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm, I'm grinding it out. I'm getting nowhere. And then all of a sudden you kind of got that handout that said, Hey, I'm going to show you the way. Oh, did no, that my, flip my the switch for you. No, no, my I, I had the nice, I had the great 
um, I've had a great run in real estate because I started in a firm that was an independent firm and it was uh, owned by uh, a tyrant. He's a cool tyrant, but he was a tyrant by the, uh, you know, like my way or the highway. Yeah. And the manager um, th that was there, she was someone who's just a lifelong real estate. She actually just officially retired. Uh, she's definitely up there in, in years, but she officially retired. But that's after a long time, just lifelong people person yeah. and totally different personality types. Myself, uh, myself and my broker might have had a much more similar personality test than me and my i call her the mentor but she was really the manager just the sales manager yeah. you know okay you know and, and just the day to day it wasn't like a mentor like taking me by by the by the hand and saying okay this is how it's going to be done yeah. imitate no it was uh it was like i saw how she did it i i, I give her a lot of credit she she had something that uh, i almost uh, i don't think i could have but i tried i try to emulate it was always like she knew the, the path. She knew that you, you're on the phone and you're talking to someone and that person is saying, I don't want my house on the market. I don't want to sell my house. I, like, I'm listening to her talk. And, and then well, I heard on the other side, uh, on my, my manager side, she said, oh, okay, so we're going to book the open house for Saturday. I'm like, you, and, and the logical person is going to say, wait a minute. The, the, the person saying, I'm not selling my house, and maybe some profanity in the middle of it. And, okay, so I'll just book it for Saturday. And it was like, just like, like there's nothing, you know, like business could be uh, slow, and then it's like, okay, go back to the book. Uh, not so much cold calls, but call your, in, in our industry, sphere of influence. Hi, how are you? How's the house coming along? Everything. Who do you know that's thinking about selling? Yeah. Like, so she was, she was, I loved her, I, I loved her perseverance. Her perseverance, I you know, it's just, it was beyond my my perception, and I think I've adopted some of those traits. But I I have to admit, and I think you, you, anyone in sales has to have it. You talked about the no, you know, and yeah. uh, what, what what boggles my mind is the people that don't answer the door. Yeah, um, in, in our in our industry, with you, you do have a slight advantage. Someone's walking into the dealership. You got a really if if I'm listen, I, I've I've gone into dealerships <laughs> for, with friends. Oh, Ted, I want to go check out the X uh, the X three. And you know, I, I'm like, he's pretty tall. I don't know if you're gonna fit in the X3, but let's go check it out anyway. It was between that and the Audi, and I was like, okay, let me go. I, I love, I love car dealerships, and I'm not kidding. I, I look at the X3, and you know, six days later, I'm driving away in the five series. Yeah, you got you know, put into a car. Oh, I got, I got, yeah, I got, got a good a salesperson. Yeah, I, I don't know, got it, got you, if I tell car. you her name, you, yeah. you may know her. I she was do. good. She, yeah. she was like. And she she didn't like my friend. And yeah. she like disregarded him. She was like, I'm not making a sale out of that guy. He's, she's like, I said, <laughs> my lease isn't up for two years. I, you know, so it's like, I'm not ready for it, but I really, I wouldn't mind looking at the five. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I see you in the five series. And then she calls me up later that afternoon. She's like, I found this car. It's oh, cinnamon man. interior. Oh man, it, she got you. Yeah, she got she me. Got I was like, where do yeah. I sign? There's so many, there's so many, you know, um, you know, you, you said there's an advantage to the car industry and like having somebody walk in and out of the store and that's great, but you know, it's also what you said before. It's it's about your salesmanship and, and what it takes to make that sale happen. And and there's so many salespeople that are out there that are so skilled, so talented in what they do, and you know, that's why people get scared to walk into dealerships. They should be. You know, and I don't want to say you should be. You exactly. should come on in, come into the store, buy a Mercedes from me. But People know that when they walk into a store or especially a dealership, there is that chance and that opportunity that, hey, something may make sense. That salesperson may find that need for you where you're going to say, well, I thought it wasn't going to happen. And all of a sudden it's happening. And all of a sudden I'm driving home in a brand new car. Mm -hmm. And you didn't you get home two, three days later. And you're like, wait a minute. I wasn't even in the market for a car. Yeah. You just found something that made sense. And I would say that comes like your needs assessment, you know, as far as for real estate goes, I don't know what your process may be, you know, but for us, it's, you know, meet and greet, a walk around, a needs assessment, you know, test drive, sitting them down at your desk, collecting information, and then kind of just walking them through that process of saying, hey, this is, and then all of a sudden, sometimes you get to the end of that process and they're just like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. You made sense of something. You found a need that they were looking to fill and you okay. did it. 
See, Sometimes I'm they seeing, don't even know what's there. Well, I'm seeing more and more similarities. It's it's exactly the same in real estate. Uh, if someone's looking to buy a house, needs assessment, you figure out what they're qualified for, what they're yeah. pre-approved for, then you, you you show them around some houses. Test drive. Test drive, yeah. And you know, we there's a there's a an old phrase in real estate. You know, um, I don't want to. Well, but they say buyers are liars, and that's <laughs> not ex- yes, but My that's not exactly is, what uh, they mean. Uh, you know, you know oh, those man, words because yeah. because I think you know, um, but they're not. Issues. Here's the thing, and I hate to say that because I, I I don't want to go on camera and say buyers are liars. <laughs> no, <laughs> buyers don't know what they want sometimes until they're educated. Like someone says, I don't want to buy a. I'm never going to buy a ranch in th- that section of town. Okay, and they'll, suddenly they'll say, "Can I see this this house?" And you, you weren't. Our job is not the ones to say. That's like me coming in and saying, uh, "I was thinking about a convertible, but can I test drive the G wagon?" You're gonna say, well, "Why are you test drive the G wagon?" Because you're asking for a convertible. And no, guess everybody what? wants to drive a G wagon. Everyone, yes, everybody wants to drive a G wagon. I, I, I got I just, one for you at the store too. I don't yeah. know if Monica showed you yet, but I definitely have one. And it's, oh, it's pretty well, sweet. Yeah, yeah, I know. I had I had personalized license plates on the the on a different car, which I won't say the brand, but it was a nice brand. And um, <laughs> it blew up. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Monica right, already got your uh, license plate. Uh, you know already it figured is. out. No, yeah. we, it's not the one you had before, but I figured no. I'd make it up. Do you know Since you want a G wagon for me, I'm just gonna. It put has it, the word wagon in it. No, I'm gonna put like you know like Ted's G on it or something like I'm that. I'm thinking T wagon. T wagon. You want to go T wagon with yeah, it? Yeah, well, when I go T wagon. G. All right. T wagon. T wagon. T wagon. That's actually clever. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that'll be good, man. Um, so no, I get like yeah. you said you get um those oh, so wait let me let me clarify yeah, my buyers are liars uh, they just don't know <laughs> what they want and suddenly they walk into the house that's in, in, in the in, on the on the street they never they they said we really don't like that street for some reason and we don't want ranches but they end up buying a ranch and it's uh, there's there's an old Century Twenty One commercial almost twenty actually thirty years old and it was about a real estate agent that kept taking eight buyers out we said we don't like capes uh, this is a colonial inspired cape. This is this is a ranch inspired cape, you know. So, but anyway, it's it's about educating them. So do you do you find that like um, when you're talking to your prospects, is it almost like they say they they want something specific? You kind of give them what they're looking for, and they kind of just turn you down from it. Like it almost wasn't their own decision decision, so they kind of back off of it. Oh, if you're yes, you can't be the know it all realtor. Yeah, uh, and I, I'm like the know nothing realtor. Like I, I've been in houses. And I may or may not know my way around a foundation crack. You know, I've, I've been in yeah. enough houses, but you know, like, like this is this is just normal. Like, you know, I was trained with a with a trainer in the very beginning that always talked about don't logic with the humans, and yeah, that's logic. It's like, but you said you absolutely need this, and this house doesn't have it. Why should I show it to you? No, that's a know it all. That's an egg. Yeah, I like I go with the flow, and that's that, that's what we should because yeah. it's their decision. It's a very it's a very big decision in in terms of and it's also a decision that can always be second guessed like that's where we have a little bit of a difference in the industry where i sign paperwork you know everything you know it's like yeah i can't like uh, call you up the next day and say you know i'm rethinking this you yeah. know um with, with a house it, it's a long longer process but uh, a lot of times and that goes back, what you just asked was don't logic with the humans and that's very specific you know a, a seller may say i will never ever ever take less than this number yeah uh, our job and that's why part of part of our industry is kind of working in our favor where it says present all offers yeah. oh mr and mrs home seller i actually have to present all offers and again comes into training we train our agents where the the first thing you say to them is not oh it's uh, seven hundred fifty two thousand dollars i know it's only fifty thousand over the asking price you know that that, that kind of uh, technique but no you, you go with listen you know i have to present all offers no matter how low they are and and also if a buyer pre- presents an offer that's lower than asking price it actually means that they like your house as much as if they were paying you asking price it's obviously a buying signal same way a buying signal is oh that window's smaller than it should be oh that these ceilings are a little low yeah that's like a buying signal either that or they're just you know nags um but but yes uh but uh but going back to uh your your question no i never logic with the humans mm. uh, it, it, and I, and, I, and i do not recommend it it's like no this doesn't make sense nope if it makes sense in their mind it's emotional and i, I cars are emotional too yes i think if i test drove the g-wagon i would figure it out like even when, when with the bmw it was uh, they, they gave me some incentives and it was like so if i take this incentive i can just pay off my other lease 
and I'll get my, you know, this long story there, but you know, my younger brother will take that You're car. You're justifying your purchase. I justified it. Yeah. Oh, it's so easy to justify it. Somehow you yeah. justified having, I'm one person and I have three cars on, on my, well, my driveway. Well, $2,000 <laughs> in incentives. So yeah, you that know pays what? It pays for that. At least, yeah. you know, I got to make up somewhere else and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff like that. My, my mentor always uh, is a big buyers is liars kind of guy. Um, and he's like uh, what you said before when it comes to your mentors. He falls more on the, I don't want to call him a tyrant because I love you, but um, he's a little bit more of an aggressive kind of type of salesperson where he's more of like straight to the point, let's make it happen, what's it going to take? And he'll grind and grind and grind and grind it out, which is something that for me was my light switch of where my process was. And like you said, it's is not like process? some... No, no, oh, not, oh. no, I'm not, not the aggressive guy, but he never grabbed my hand and took it. You know what I'm saying? Like when you were going with before, it was more mm-hmm. of my manager too as well. Um, when it comes to buyers or liars for me, and it, it comes more on the shopping side of things, it's when they leave the store itself, you're never really going to get the truth out of them because somebody on the phone for us is a completely different person than who they were when they walked through the door. And they were sitting down with me in front of me and, and kind of working it out. So a good example would be like, well, you know what? Uh, somebody else has got the GLS SUV and it's $300 less a month. And I, I can't seem to, to find that $300. So it's, it's like, well, you know what? If I'm using the most aggressive pricing possible, even if as far as I can go back before I can even say, hey, you know what, Rob? If you make this deal, you're getting fired for it. You know, even if I went that far that number doesn't even exist. So that's kind of where we get into the buyers or liars in our industry is is the shopping side of it, what my payment is, what my duet signing is, because everybody's pinning you up against the other guy who's around the block for the same unit, and he's trying to work out and see who's the liar, though. Is the other store the liar or am I the liar kind of deal? And usually sometimes it's, I find that taking the deal away works for me. So, oh, well, fantastic. $300 less on the payment. Congratulations on your new GLS. Oh, see, we think the same oh. way. Oh, um, uh, uh, thanks. And that's kind of what you get back. And But you know what? If you do decide to go with us, I will do this for you. I'll make sure that, you know what? I'll work out a service plan. I'll make sure that you have a VIP. When you show up to my store, I'm your point guy. I'm here for you specifically. And a lot of people will like to say and know that they have their own guy that oh, they can rely on. I believe that. I love it's the service. It's worth $100 a month sometimes. Yeah. And your number wasn't ever real to begin with anyway. And you wouldn't be surprised at saying when you just kind of take that deal and you just wipe it away from them, three days later, they're calling you back because they went to that store on that what if number. Well, what if I got it $300 a month? You sat in their desk and then you just got went through that whole beating of them building you back up again. And you spent hours there. By the time you leave there, you either bought a car because you were exhausted and you were there already. Or Mm -hmm. you're like, you know what? You didn't like the experience. You decided to leave and you called me back. And another good way too is is, um, if you're going to shop one of my numbers, I'm going to always give my best and final. It's always going to be best and final when you're walking out my door or off hanging off the phone with me. Because if I'm not going to make the deal, I'm going to make sure that somebody else is going to have to pay for that deal. Back to, you know, sometimes the buyers just don't know what they want. But I also tell a lot of my agents, you can't want it more than they do, Mm -hmm. whether it's a buyer or a seller. Exactly what you said. I mean, listen, I, uh, you know, we're going to put everything on the table. and I'm going to go. I'm going to go and try to seal the deal as best as I can. End the story. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it my best shot. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to pay someone to do business with me. Yeah. So So emotion based. Yeah. So yeah, on my part, based. no, I yeah. take the, I take the emotion right out because oh, really? uh, I removed my heart about yeah. twelve years ago. Yeah. 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 Me too. <laughs> just small pull, operation. Just one cut right there and just pull it right out. Makes it easier, right? Yeah. Yeah. My family thinks I'm the cold one, but I'm really not. It's... I I know I'm the cold one. Uh, my, my agents think I'm the cold one. Wait, they've they've said things. I can't ask him that. Something about buying a washing machine for a buyer, and I, I, I'm not going to ask him because I know he's dead inside. And uh, I'm like, yeah. And uh, you know when agents cry, you know there's no crying yeah. in real estate. Uh, so I, I have, a, I, have I, I try to, I, I try to get all my one-liners all together. They usually, <laughs> it's either a Tom Hanks movie or a, or Pretty Woman. That uh, Pretty Woman has words to live by in real estate. Really, no kissing on the lips. Never make it personal. You know, like 
oh, they're not going to have a house in time for Christmas. You know, that kind yeah. of, you know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Never make it personal. No kissing on the lips. Um, never joke about money. Uh, let's see. And, oh, well, pretty woman. We work on commission, right? You sure. know, never assume, you know, that person walking in. <laughs> you know, I, I sold a house to a person that probably no one would have worked with 20 years ago. And uh, that person uh, in, in the interim in the last 20 years has bought many properties, uh, became a very smart businessman, um, owns his own renovation company, now uh, technically retired, and we were looking at $4 million waterfronts for his son. Wow. So 20 years later, you know, and again, was it a lot of work to find him the house 20 years ago? Yes. Yeah. His mortgage company was like some out-of-country mortgage company. It was, very, it was very interesting, but he appreciated it. He's, I, I couldn't even count the number of times he says thank you. And to this day, uh, I would still call him, uh, you know, a friend. And if I need any kind of roofing or renovation, I, I, he's my first phone call. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, no emotion. I don't know. That's, yeah. I mean, because I would say like a lot of emotion in newer salespeople is usually what comes out. And a big thing what we say is, is uh, especially in like the kind of clientele that I have and the client the kind of like vehicles that I sell, we probably did about 1.5 million just in G wagons so far this month. Um, well, because they're selling over ask. Well, yeah, we're we're asking okay. over market for the for the vehicles, uh -huh. and you know it's the same thing with these houses. You know, your house is four ninety nine. You're not selling it for four ninety nine. We all we all know that it's going into the five mark. It may even touch the sixes, depending on the market itself. And you know, when it comes to you know you know same thing with washes, Rolexes. It's when you want something and there's very limited supply of it, especially of such a unique item. And it's kind of going to set you apart from everybody else. There's going to be a market adjustment to it. Just mm. it is what it is, and a lot of people get upset about it. But our big thing is, is uh, you never spend somebody else's money. You never exactly. Do. You um, can't. I can't you, negotiate. You can't. I can't say it's only twenty. It's only yeah. twenty-two thousand dollars. Come on. Yeah. You know, and and it's just you know what. Even if the guy just walked in, he's walking around the store, and you never know who anybody is. Um, they can be New Balance is on. Dirty jeans, nasty white T-shirt. Um, you walk around, just say hello to everybody, and because you'll be surprised, he's buying the three hundred ninety thousand dollar four by four square that I just got in. So, do you recommend if I go into a dealership, should I look like I dress like I'm? Go I have a closing today, so I'm gonna show up in profession. You know, not, yeah. I, I wear dress pants. You know, not khakis typically in the summertime. So, should I walk in like myself? Or should I? Or do you recommend you like you know walk in and dress up? I would say walk in like yourself. Walk in like yourself. Be yourself. Um, understand that there's another human being on the other end of that too, as well in that process. Um, we're not bad people, you know what I'm saying. So, especially when you're walking into the dealership yourself, be open to being helped. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a salesperson come over and say, "Hey, how can I help you today?" And you'll find that even you know what, if you just say, "Hey, you know what, I'm just browsing." If your salesperson says, well, what are you looking for? A car, a sedan, a SUV? What, what, what's, what brought you in today? Well, you know what? I went on the website. I saw you guys had a few SUVs. I got one. I'm driving now. It's an old one. It's kind of starting to break down. All of a sudden, you're kind of just spewing out what you need to get done already. It kind of mm -hmm. comes out naturally. And you're almost. listening and you're like, you're okay, just, wait, I'm... You're just listening. Your That's needs assessment. Doing. It's almost... It's like doing the needs assessment without actually doing it. You're just having conversation, you know? walk around the dealership somebody's going to approach you somebody's going to say how can i help you and don't don't push them away just if you need the help take the help do you recommend doing research on like so if, if i let's pretend I, I i kind of you know listen it's not just the g-wagon that could be a, an option i i i always had my heart set on a panamera um but then i read that they also have some problems you know mechanical problems uh, but i'm not so gonna go there do you do your research <laughs> first do you do your research and then i then i'm totally in i i, I know the brand i want and, and and just just you'll walk into a dealership and say okay let me see what they can do or should it be like you know sometimes buyers show up and say i don't know what i want so let's um, look at everything um it's a mix of both um a lot of people will show up and say they don't know what they want because they honestly really just don't um Maybe they see themselves in an SUV that makes sense, and you know what? They're got a lifestyle that's skiing and snowboarding, or you know what? They got no kids. It's them and their spouse or their significant other. Maybe a two-door coupe. Maybe they're feeling it for just the summer. Maybe it's um, a three-year thing for them, and their lifestyle may change. So I would say if you're starting to look for a car, um, 
obviously your budget's what's important because that's the money you're going to be spending. Um, national ads, you can always look on national ads. You know, every dealership's going to have some sort of payment on their website or something along those lines. Those are always based off of an MSRP that doesn't exist. So you should always add on to that. So let's say you're looking at a Nissan Sentra. It's $299 a month with X to it signing. You should probably add another $100 to that payment and understand that you're going to come in with way more money because they don't include taxes on that. So if you are doing that research, just kind of always keep that in mind. Find the car that always works best for you and definitely do research. Is it economy that you're looking for? Is it size that you're looking for? Is it luxury that you're looking for? Or is it more of a personality thing that you're trying to find? A sports car, a convertible, something along those lines. So definitely research first. That's the most important thing. See, real estate agents, I think, tend to go towards a luxury car because we, we will spend. Meanwhile, I, I never thought I'd, I'd buy a pickup. And I, no, wait, I never thought I'd lease a pickup and then I leased it. And then I never thought I would. I never. Uh, I actually always go in for leases, and I n never plan on buying them out. Yeah. And then th this time around, I'm like, I like my pickup. I like it's, it's convenient. I mean, last week we were moving furniture. Uh, your wife was with me, so uh, she told me she yeah, hustled like, into uh, taking home a uh, yeah. nightstand. Where do you think I got this couch? <laughs> 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 you always, see, somebody got sold then that day. Oh, I've I've picked up so many great things from from my clients over the years. We had one client. I bought a club chair that uh, I, I just got rid of my other furniture in my living room and I kept the club chair. Yeah. And th then another unit, uh, it was it's like a 12 foot tall unit. I mean, the, the nice items, they were just, you know, they were like, oh, I don't know what to do with them. And th they were selling them. I was like, oh, nice. And then this couch was free. Um, uh, but wait, I, was, uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but that's that's me. You know, yeah. things that don't think that you make, that make sense and eventually do make sense. Um, they say in every transaction, there's always a buyer. And you got bought on this couch. Yes. There's, a, there's an ass for every seat. <laughs> there's an ass for every seat, mm -hmm. and this is one of them. Yep. That's, <laughs> how, that's how we, we feel in, in real estate. Um, but wait, so I have. So you I, lease your car? I No, I bought I bought my truck out. I used to, I, I, I've been, le I was leasing for almost like, yeah, 15 years. Yeah. What made you get into the lease? Oh, I, I like the, the lower the lower payment. Okay. And I also like the idea, that actually, I get tired of my, I usually get tired of cars within two years. And the two-year lease never made sense financially, but a lot of time, a lot of my leases, I would end up with the mile overage. So the two and two and a half year mark, I'd have to go, I'd, I'd go in and, and figure out a way to, tra mm -hmm. to trade it, trade it up or something. So that's, uh, the, yeah, I was leasing for that long. Did uh, your family try to talk you out of a lease? No, my family knows no. better than to talk me out of anything. No, really. Most people that so know old me, old school, they just say never lease a car. I, yeah. I only believe in leasing. Okay, why do you only believe in leasing? I only believe in leasing because. It's always a depreciating asset. So you walk in, you get a new car. You're going to spend $70,000 on that car. That car, you drive it off the lot, immediately drops in value. Even today? Even today. Okay. Three years down the road, you're looking at about 51% on that car. By the time you, you're about to turn it in. And that's where you said, you know what, I've leased my truck and I decided to buy it out. That buyout price, in compared to the rest of the market, must have been a significant spread for you to consider doing it was a huge difference yeah i couldn't lease a truck like mine for anything close to the payment i was paying yeah. and i couldn't buy my truck on the open market for for i would need 20 i i, I needed fifteen thousand dollars more yeah. to even so, buy something that comparable and my, my truck had one thing that it, that it had and so it's a it's it's the dodge it's the laramie but it has the pack the interior package of uh, the moonroof and the technology and the screen of the other one the limited which yeah. was really expensive you know all the bells and whistles but, but don't worry i'm not yeah. adverse to the g-wagon so you know when when it comes to like buying your car versus leasing mm. and the same thing depreciation is always going to be in a car it's not like you're buying a rare jaguar or anything like that it's a classic car that you see in 10 years is actually going to build value we're talking your normal run-of-the-mill daily driving units. Um, leasing is important because if you finance the car, you're going to be making that payment 72 months anyway. That payment is going to be a high payment. Five years into that loan, you're going to be realizing you're paying for a $70,000 car when it's currently only a $30,000 car. So that payment is still there. So no matter what you're doing, you're always making a payment. Even if you decide to get into a new car, you know what? I'm going to trade it in. I'm going to get into a new car. When you trade it in, not only are you affected by the value of the car, if you got into a car accident, uh, nicks and scratches on the car too as well, 
things in dents, um, history, service history, tires. That's all going to affect value of your vehicle. The benefit of a lease is you're three years, four years, depending on your terms, your miles, and what bank you're using. Um, you have a residual value at the end of that, which is your buyout. Now, if you're with a manufacturing like uh, Chrysler Capital, Mercedes-Benz Financial, BMW Financial, Volkswagen, all those guys, and you're using a non-credit union kind of lease, a dealership can kind of say, hey, you know what? You're driving your car and you don't have any accidents on it. You only got 30,000 miles on it, which means your overall cost of ownership hasn't really hit you just yet. But you know what? Your buyout, let's say, is 24,000. And when it came to like your truck, Hey, well, my truck, my buyout's like ten thousand dollars less than what the current market is. For me, it's it's a bonus for me because it's it's a leased car, so I get credit for buying the car. So I can say, hey, you know what? Your payout is twenty four thousand. Current market is thirty thousand on the vehicle. Instead of you buying it, paying taxes, waiting for the title, another two months of depreciation. How about we meet in between those two budget lines and say? I'll give you $3,000 towards any new lease you want to get into. And I'll kind of convert that lease return into an equity pool. And I can say, hey, you know what, Ted, I you, you love your new truck. Yes, payments have gone up, but I got a brand new Ram in the back that has all the same features of it. I can yank about five grand of equity out of that and get you maybe closer to $100 more a month. But you know what? It's a new car. You're under factory warranty. And you're going to be fully serviced for the next three years. So not only that, but that $100 a month is going to cost you more over the next three years on the current car you're driving now. Because you're going to have to put tires on it eventually. Oh, I That's going to run you about $2,000. You're going to have to do brakes. You're going to have to do oil changes. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I could do it for this. I could do it for that. That's great and all, but it's still overall cost of ownership. Your check engine light comes on got to get it diagnosed nowadays a lot of shops can't work on these kind of cars you got to bring them to the dealership so, so you're bringing me to a point which is now you're educating me all right so and i think that's the trick that's the trick to sales if you go to the trouble to educate someone first of all the fact that you can educate someone means that you know you know the industry okay so yeah. so so that you, you just put into my head like exactly and and i kind of know and listen i well, no, I really don't know that much about cars. Uh, but yes, so you're educating me, and I think that's what leads to the successful sale. And yeah, I'm definitely, well, first of all, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm going to ask you privately about are there incentives out there? You know, like, what well, you know, uh, I I do have, I, I'd love the G-Wagon for like, I really would like it for two years. I think two years I would get it out of my system, maybe three. Like, I would do a lease on a G-Wagon, although I, 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 I mean, is it that ama is it it's, like it's amazing? It's really not. It's right now, it's like, if you were to lease a G-Wagon right now, you're better off just buying it. Your lease price is, we're, we're talking a different unit now. Yeah. Well, on some on some luxury cars, it does make sense. Yes, to, on, to on, most, on most luxury cars, depending on how elite of a vehicle you're going, it will make sense to purchase the vehicle. Yep. Yes, yeah. I, I know that from uh, from years ago, someone said, because of all the bells and whistles. You kind of want the bells and whistles, so it may make sense to take a two-year, you know, like say a two-year-old uh, Mercedes, have all the bells and whistles instead of a brand new one to lease it with everything and, and the cost of And that car. goes into what you said was incentives, right? So I have a three-year-old Mercedes on my front line. It is a certified unit, which means it's going to come with a warranty. You can attach factory warranty to it and you can almost get a new car warranty within a used vehicle that's already been depreciated so financing too as well they offer maybe a special rate 299 on 36 months something along those lines and you know that'll kind of incentivize you into saying you know what instead of buying it cash maybe i can move into a certified unit yeah, you know what? It's a little older. It's got a few thousand miles on it, but I have full coverage. I know mm -hmm. I'm safe. I yeah. know I'm good. So I'm going to divert a little bit because I, uh, I wanted to ask certain questions of all the guests that are on for th being great at what you do. And just talking to you for a few minutes, I had never met you before. You're actually the first guest that I've never met before. So uh, just talking to you for, for like the, you know, the past 30 minutes, I can see that you are, you are great at what you do, but it's because of the knowledge base that you have and you've been around cars you've been doing this for almost 20 almost years, 20 years yeah. Yeah. yeah so if i had to if i was to ask you what do you like most about your field um i would say the the, the rare kind of people i meet 
um, you bump into a lot of different people, especially in the uh, the area that I'm in. Um, I would say that's my favorite part of it is getting to know them. And they share a lot of wisdom with you too as well. So you get to learn a lot from your customers and that kind of aspect. But um, it always goes down to making the sale, man. It's always about the sale for me. Um, knowing that I, I got it done or even the complicated situations. Uh, somebody's got bad credit or, you know what, they're really all over the place or... You know, life happens, you know, a death in the family, you're trying to help them work it out. I would say that's probably the most exciting stuff. The more complicated something is, I find myself to enjoy it a little bit better. All right. What is the thing you enjoy least in your field? Um, oh, man. The customers. <laughs> Sometimes the customers. So um, the answer to one was the people, and the answer to two was the, the people. people. Um, yeah, it could go both ways. I would say, you know, what I don't like the least is, is when there's something wrong with the car. Um, where, you know what, you, you got a great car, you had it up front, every, it checked through with technician, fine, everything's going great. And then, you know, the customer's in it for a week and it's a catastrophic thing. And, you know, that weighs heavy on my heart because it's it doesn't make you feel good. It kind of makes you feel a little bit like, all right, well, I sold them the car. I feel like now I have a responsibility towards getting it fixed for them. Uh, New York State obviously protects you yeah. uh, with... But you do you do understand that that's actually something that is 100% out of your control. Completely out of my control. Yeah. Completely like, out of my control. Yeah. But it's just a personal thing that I'm like, oh, you know, yeah. especially with this somebody that, you know what, you really worked hard into getting them into it. I've, um, had, I've had clients call and say, oh my gosh, we had so many problems with the house. Yeah, said, uh, it, it is was, what it is. But No, one client did call me on that and, and, and I said, wow, um, what inspector did you use? Yeah. Because and I almost always want to have to know the answer before. Also, it wasn't the person I recommended. Oh, okay. It's like, you know, some yeah. things are beyond my control. Yeah. But so now you see, yeah, heart gone. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's part of it too. You yeah. know, the heart could go away because it's, you can almost divert it. But when it's like, it all always points back to me. Mm -hmm. Do you know where it's like, hey, well, it was my guy. This was my sale. This was the car that I took in, I hung the number on it. I made the sale on it. And you kind of feel a little bit of a responsibility towards it. And and you kind of like, and it, and it gets tough sometimes, you know. Um, yeah, sometimes it is what it is where you just gotta be like, hey, you know what, sorry. Yep. It's a car, things happen. That's why you're on the warranty. So I'll get it enough. fixed. I've had, so I've had, uh, I guess I, it, I'm staying in the sales field, although my next guests are completely outside the sales real estate field. But so, you, you know, you're, you're in cars, uh, car sales. Uh, then we, we had a mortgage person and I had another real estate agent, a top producer. And a lot of the answers when I asked what they liked the most, it was the people. And when they said what they you know, liked the least, it was also, you know, a, 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 a tangent of the people. So, yeah. so far, we're batting a thousand for the same answer. Yeah. And we're also, now, so my next question, I'm going to see, because uh, I'm apparently the odd one out, no matter what, out of five, uh, four guests so far. If you had to choose, I'm not saying that you do, I'm not saying that someone's <laughs> going to disappear from the planet, but if you had to choose between Elvis and the Beatles, because I believe there's two types of people. We're all good and we all get along. But there's two types of people in the world. Elvis and or the Beatles. Who would you choose? Come on, Paul. I love you, man. The Beatles. Wow, I'm totally odd. Every every single person on my list of guests so far, everyone seems so I seem to, so I seem to be gravitating towards asking guests on my show that are actually the other person. I'm waiting for someone to answer the uh, Elvis, and I'll be like, "Oh, brother." So, what's what's the main point of the question? What's what, oh, what is it about Elvis? You you know, I, I actually never. I just I just knew the question. I just heard it somewhere, and I was like, "Oh, that is interesting." It's like when people say Star Wars or Star Trek. Oh, okay. Uh, I think there's a thinner line there. That's a like, lot like you I still have to be in one you know category. Uh, Elvis or the Beatles? I think it it, it actually has to do with a, a, a personality trait. And if you gravitate towards, and I, I'm, I'm like 90% sure that my, my guest for my uh, my uh, Orange Theory Fitness Gym, I, I think I know what she, she's going to say. And I, I'm curious about it. I think she'll be the only one that's going to side with me. But I'm going to be the wrong. Elvis side. Yeah. So uh, is the Elvis side like uh, like more of like the show? I, th I think it has to do with a little bit of an individual gene, like an individuality, maybe a little bit more of a, a, 
of a loner type of personality, mm-hmm. um, whether it's you know something that happened through life or maybe you know I don't know if we're, we're born with it. But I, I, I see like if, when someone answers the Beatles, and I, I'm like, hmm, I see that. I see, I, I, I could see that the, uh, much more of an ensemble kind of approach. Yeah. Like if we were, yeah. And then Elvis, not that, not that the, the, they're lonely people. It's just like so, um, I, I take it as, you know, I'm, I'm a horrible person to work for. I'm, I'm re- and there's a reason That's for it. That's not what I heard. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, at least. Not yet. We'll see what happens. Uh, wh- whether it's when, wh- I, I was about to say when I cast assistants, uh, but when, when you hire an assistant, I don't know why. So, like, assistants, I, I, I used to go, I, I used to not be able to fire people, too. So, but so I would, they would last for a while, but they were just bad. They were just bad assistants. And not because of them. I think it was because of me. Because sometimes, like, I actually do know how to do everything in my industry. And, and I don't mean that in a conceited way. I mean, I know how to be an assistant. I can be my own assistant. Yeah. I can make my own appointments. I can I can buy my own flowers too. Um, so, you know, I know how to do it. So it's hard for me to, you know, like sometimes the assistant's like, you really don't know how to do that. Like, you know, yeah. you know and maybe I I'm just- you were not- cold, Ted. You can't fire him? No, I, 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 I fired agent. I had to fire two agents three times. Oh. Every time I was like, but I think I'll just sit at this desk then. I'm like, mm, I really need the space. Oh, and uh, I mean, some agents I flat out said, I don't think real estate's for you. Yeah. And they flat out turned around and said, well, I'm going to still make it. Yeah. They didn't. No. No, no, no. no. So nobody's proved you wrong yet. It's very, um, that, now that one I should, it's v- I've been proven wrong, yeah. and I'm very disappointed in myself when I get proven wrong. But I, uh, I, I, but I know deep down I was right. I kind of like uh, being proven wrong. Uh, you don't like it? It hits you hard. No, it doesn't hit me at all. But no. I, but I, I cannot say I like it. Really? I, I, I like, I like being proven right so much more. Yeah, <laughs> like, I like seeing success even like ten years me. later. <laughs> I like seeing, like, you know what, like the one guy that, that wasn't making it, you know what, and you know, sometimes oh, you want to blame yourself. I never for, pick. Oh, no, no, no. That's know? that's something I learned. Uh, I, I always saw people say, like, you know, another manager that we had at one of our offices would always say, oh, they're going to be so good. Oh, they're going to be so good. Yeah. And it's like, oh, gosh, I'm glad you never said that about me. Yeah. <laughs> but because uh, every time, every time we used to have a, actually, I am the last person. So they used to hand out these awards, Rookie of the Year. Uh, at, at some of our uh, some of our award ceremonies, um, and so my first year, I did get Rookie of the Year, and it was a nice little trophy. I don't even know what I did with it. Okay, everyone else that's ever gotten that is no longer in the business. Really? Like it's amazing. It's a like mm-hmm. I was like, uh oh. So that's the kiss of death. But uh, but yeah, I never pick. Oh no, I, yeah. I the other people have, and she's not in the room, so we could say, it. oh yeah, no, people people love your wife. Yeah, my colleagues, my yeah, yeah they're like, yeah. Oh. But, well, she's gonna turn that into sales. Yeah, but yeah. What we like <laughs> what, what, what we what we like about your wife is her. I think it goes back to perseverance. It's like that exactly what everyone has to do in the beginning. You gotta, you know, I call it paying. You know, we call it paying your dues. Yep. You're earning it. You gotta earn and it. And because she's earning it, she'll always be able to earn it. Yeah. Like you know, it's like oh, so time. Um, not not that much inventory. Not that not not that many listings to go around. Let me let me grab a couple of buyers and land them in homes. Yeah. You know, an agent who never knew how to do that can't do it. And I think a lot of our newer agents, a lot of the people that are coming coming into the industry, look at um, TikTok, Instagram, and um, reality TV, selling Sunset, and they think I'm just going to wear you know a push up bra and a tight skirt, uh, short skirt, and I'm going to just you know waltz into. 10 and 15 million dollar homes yeah. and that's 100 percent great if you were always you know if you're in the country clubs and you're in beverly hills and you've lived your life in beverly hills yeah. that makes a lot of sense but in in my real estate world it's called you know learning learning doing learning doing and, and making sales yeah yeah it um, always comes down to making the sale and uh you know I, I tell monica all the time you know everybody wants to be a player but they haven't scored a point yet you know, and yeah. you really just got to like that phrase. You got to really just sit into it and, and take it step by step. I tell my agents just because you got one magic trick, right? You don't make a fucking that's Harry funny. Potter. What I just said was a little Wayne quote, actually. Oh, a little yeah. Wayne. Oh, yeah. gosh. That's so, so, so not my, <laughs> no, my style, but it's, cool. it's, it's a little Wayne quote. <laughs> everyone wants to be a player, but no one wants to. Well, score every, a point. Uh, yeah, everyone thinks they're a player, but they haven't scored a point. 
Oh, oh, my producer put a put a soundbite on Instagram. I, I saw that one. He, he he accuses me of not watching the podcasts, and it's it's a, it's not an accusation. It's a fact. <laughs> I hardly watch the podcast. I, I mean, I think I, I I just have to take some time and like say it. Let, let me let me see it. But I think I need a little distance from it. Like I need like a, a month to go by. Um, and one of the sound bites was, you know, uh, everyone, I, you know, I had an agent that I don't want to be on a billboard. It's like, go sell a hundred houses, you shit. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. like what? Just do it. Yeah. Either that or get, get mommy and daddy to pay $7,500 for the year and you can be on a billboard. Yeah. 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 Don't do that. Yeah. You know, just sit and grind it out. Pick up the phone. For us, the phone's the money. Um, you know, it's, if the phone's ringing, pick it up. Take every opportunity as you should. Follow your process as you should. Well, that phone to ring costs money it costs money the the dealership spends money absolutely you know there's marketing there's advertising you know there's a lot that goes into just making that phone ring itself and you know it's a golden ticket just pick it up um the phone can ring 100 times a day um 99 of them might be just useless you know just them trying to gather information up to kind of leverage a deal they have somewhere else that other call though is hey when can you come in set that appointment and let's see what we can do and uh you know, the phone is so critical for us. It's it's crazy. You know, I see Monica on the phone all the time now. I see her answering calls all the time. And I even say, says, they're calling. You, you pick it up. You make it happen. You smile on the phone. Well, she's got a good pleasant. support system in, in this particular case. When And when she told me what you did for a living, I was like, oh, yeah, score. Not for the G-Wagon, because yeah. I know I'll be driving that soon. <laughs> but I was like, score. He knows. He knows what goes on. And uh, I think that car sales are way more stressful than real estate. I think that there's more more stress involved there. I've seen people, you know, I've seen people get themselves sick in car sales, like you know, doing it. So uh, total total kudos and to- total uh, total props. Yeah, to, it's a lot yeah. of hours. Um, it's a lot of life, a lot of life spent there at the store, you know. But you know, you got to be that, got to be that guy or that girl, you know, where you're just gonna really just. Say, hey, I'm I'm in this to, to make money, and that's what everybody's supposed yeah. to be in it. For. And listen, with real estate, yes. Oh, there's going to be, you know, she'll be missing from barbecue. She'll be oh, missing, yeah. you know, skip out on. You know, I mean, they're serious that you're not going to skip out on your sister's wedding. You're not going to, you know, yeah. you know, you have to do certain things. But a couple of years in, and then you know, not uh, not twenty years, you know, a couple of years in too, maybe even like the eighteen month mark you'll you, you know you get to notice more business more residual business like that's coming in that you didn't have to work for yeah and so that that was 20 hours you didn't have to spend that week but you got business and if you want oh yeah i'm, I'm taking a break my, you know me and my husband we're, we're, take, we're, we're taking we're going to hawaii whatever the case is you can you know you, you you can have the the infrastructure to be able to say i'm going to take i have i have an agent uh, she's the busiest agent we have in our whole company right now and she's leaving for a cruise i think it's like 12 day cruise in october i know i'm going to be there to to assist her she wants to enjoy i want my agents to enjoy i want i i want to enjoy but then there's going to be a week or a two week period where i'm going to be like okay i'm mia too now yeah. you know so you get that that opportunity you just don't have it in the beginning i always notice agents so my 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 first manager she was on vacation i think she was on vacation more than she worked yeah and good for her she was also in real estate 20 years more than i was yeah. at the time and but i i always saw agents and they're like well pat uh I don't, uh, well, well, Patty's on vacation. I guess I should be, a, a, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, not how it works. No. You're supposed to imitate their, like imitate you me. You earn your stripes, man. Yeah. Well, I always, I, I think that the best advice I can give an agent and I've given it, but they just don't take it. Imitate me 20 years ago. Do not imitate me today. Like I had agents, oh, I got to get better on the Instagram. Not that I have that many followers, yeah. but I do have like some funny things that I put on Instagram and agents do comment on it. They're like, oh, I see your Instagram story. They're, they're so funny. And one agent asked me, do you get any business from it? And she's an older, older woman. And we were at just a mixer. And I said, I don't really know, but listen, if I want to get busy, I know how to get busy in real yeah. estate. You know, it's like yeah. you're, you're earning it. I know how to get listings. I know how to do everything, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but a lot of the newer agents will be like, oh yeah, I got to get on that. Like a new agent might say, oh, I got to do more podcasts. No. no, this costs money. This takes time out of my day. I'm enjoying it. I get. I, I think when, you, when people work hard and they, they earn it, I get that. I, I do enjoy it. I think it's like therapy. Yeah. Like I'm totally enjoying that. Every guest I've had here that I've quote unquote said, you're great at what you do has consistently said work ethic. 
like consistently the message. And uh, I know people are watching podcasts from all, all different people. I had an agent tell me, this is how this podcast I listened to handled this objection. And it was just, I was like, well, who was it? Like, yeah. did they even sell a house? And I said, and, and that's what inspired me. She was having a conversation with your wife. And I said, I was like, Everyone's doing a podcast. Well, at least it, maybe I have a 50 50 shot that my actual agents will listen to this. Yeah. Like, but, but between, I mean, even this conversation, you know, it's just, it's about the work. Yeah. And I'm so, that's that's why I'm enjoying these podcasts. I'm, I, it's, people are actually saying it. And that's not what we're seeing in the world sometimes and maybe more too, too often. But it's like, I, I love it. I just am, I'm enjoying it. But again, I didn't do this 20 years ago. If I was doing this 20 years ago, I wouldn't be in the business. Yeah. I would be, uh, you know. See, I'm not on the, teaching. I mean, Instagram profile for me, private. You know, um, I can't say that I make any business on it. And I, to be honest with you, Ted, I don't even want it to be public to kind of be like, oh, hey, this or that. Listen, either, the people you know? that I don't make money on the social feeds, I don't think I have the uh, the capabilities of doing that right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe listen, 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I, so I, many, I, so like many I can't have an OnlyFans right now. I mean, yeah, I'm it's old. not going to work out for me either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to pay for that, you know? So Yeah, um, 20 years ago, it might have been different. <laughs> how come everybody wants to do this Instagram stuff? What's, what's like, the big wave of, like, trying to be this, um, you know, for, for me, it's, like, on my feeds, and what I'm looking at on my feeds is, is younger guys, but it seems like not much experience, just kind of spinning facts that you can get out of a self-help book, or, or yeah. even if you just, you know what, if you decide to just walk into the industry... That's something you're going to learn so, within the first few days. Yeah. A few years back, I did the Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within. And, you know, that's a walk on fire, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And oh, what cool. what I, I, I learned, I, it just re-brainwashes you. Uh, brainwashing is not a bad thing. So it what I learned there, one of the things, one of the real lessons that I learned is that we do so, we, we are motivated by significance. And if you can um, manipulate your own brain, to give you significant, like I'm doing this podcast, am I doing it to feel significant? I, I actually gotta tell you, I think I'm doing it for the exact opposite reasons, um, to to hopefully put information out there that, that helps people. And yes, I know, it goes against my, my cold heart. So, <laughs> the cold heart's uh, coming back, it's warming up. Yeah, so, well, but if you can brainwash or manipulate your own brain to actually cause you to have significance for the right things, like, you know, you know what gives me significance? Knowing that I did five workouts in five consecutive days and I couldn't move my leg yesterday, but I did my five workouts. That, in, in my book, that is a good thing. Um, knowing that I, I helped an agent put two deals together, not one in, in the same week. That I gain significance from. You know, it's not about, oh, I have 27,000 views on, I did, I did yeah. one, one skit I did on, a, on, and that's the best, the best one I ever did, that's the only one. The only one that got so many views on Instagram. Did I feel significant? No, it was kind of cool to see those, those views, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But, you know, uh, I don't know what the Instagram craze is. Yeah. I, I, I do it for, there's the word significance, and then there's the word relevance. And it's just that if you're not in front of people, they forget about you. So my, my um, a long time ago, with all my, mar my marketing, when I was just, just an agent sell selling and listing, I did a lot that said, uh, that, that was a very interesting way of saying to try to stay present even when you're not present. Like yeah. you can't be in front of everyone, but everyone at some point is gonna have that conversation. Oh yeah, I'm gonna probably, you're gonna sell your house? Oh wow, like how are you gonna always be there on their mind? Like, okay, right now I met you and you made a nice impression on me. So if someone says, oh, I'm in the market for you know a car, period, or a Mercedes especially, I'll be like, oh wait, I have a friend. Yeah, I have a friend who actually works in uh, you know a great deal. Should just go there and and find Rob. So uh, you know the, the 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 ability to be present without being present. You know, it can't just be you know. So so you're a big referral guy. Yes, because I fall on the same page. Referrals are for me are like the most important thing. Oh, I get I get the I get the most the craziest referrals in, in a good way. I've, I've I've walked into people's houses where they said. Oh, Rob said you're cool. Uh, like I start with my present. You know, I actually do. I do go prepared presentation. You yeah. know, and they said Rob said you're cool. Uh, just tell me wh what do you need me to do? What, what do you do? I'm yeah. like, um, okay. Yeah. You want me to explain anything? No. no. I just, you know, uh, and, and it's happened more than more than more than my share, but <laughs> more than other people's shares. And, and that's that's really great. That's that's great. I mean, I do like to try to sound smart in front for, of people. For me, it's the same thing. I don't buy anything almost unless i have that referral 
it's like um with anything really you know if i same thing with like if i needed a mortgage I'm like who can i call to maybe link me up with somebody that's gonna be a mortgage rep well, obviously my wife's in it, but if I, you know, if mm-hmm. my wife wasn't in it and we bumped into you, I'd be like, well, I know Ted. Like, let yeah. me give him a call. Who does he recommend? Yeah, what and I love. The same yeah. thing. You walk into it like, hey man, you know what Ted said? You're great man. Just show me what you need me to get done for you, and I'm gonna do it. Yeah, and it makes a difference as who's to, who's giving the referrals because I I, oh, I, I I don't know how, what my some of my 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 friends or my colleagues out there say. And I've I, when I the first time it happened, I was like. Okay, you can. Okay, fine. Just all the paperwork. Okay, no problem. And uh, I gave I gave a referral to a mortgage person not, not too long ago, and I remember. And they, they they you know they thanked me and afterwards and said, yeah, we're giving her a friends and family discount. I said, well, that's nice. I didn't even ask you for that. Like you know, yeah. if I refer someone, and I'm like treat treat them like she, like it's my sister. You yep. know, like you know, like uh, you know. Uh, but but that was nice of him to just go uh, like above and beyond. Yeah. I was like, okay, and that and then that that makes you want to give more referrals. And I. You know, the same thing happened to us. We we bought Monica's Jeep, you know, and I that salesperson came off a referral from another manager. You know, I walked right in, said, Hey, I'm I'm Rob. I'm a referral from, you know, Andre and me words at his mouth, don't even worry about anything, Rob. We're gonna take care of you all the way through. Whatever you want, point it out, we'll make sure we make it happen for you. Yeah. Okay, cool. I sit with the salesperson, we go on a couple of test drives, they come back. The numbers game, which everybody always starts getting their palms sweaty about. The first number hits the desk. Rob, I know what you're about to say, and I know what you want to do. I can see it's going to, your face is turning red, and you just want to negotiate as much as you can. You can't help yourself. Totally get it. But I'm telling you right now, this is the best we're going to do. This is the friends and family. This is because of, you know what, who you got referred by. And we can't go any further than this. Okay, I'll take it. Yep. First pencil I got sold on. I can't say, listen, did they make a couple bucks? Absolutely. They say that they the s- best listen. salespeople are the easiest sold. And oh, I, I, I I, know it for a fact. I'm going to be driving a so G-Wagon soon. My Monica gets so <laughs> upset with me. She's like, she's like, the product could be terrible. You can be paying all the work. She's like, as long as you, she's like, if you find appreciation of the entire process that salesperson put you through, she's like, you buy anything. I, I, I appreciate the salesmanship of it. Um, you know what? It's not always the greatest deal. It's not always the worst deal. You know, if I fall in the middle, I walk out happy. I know I didn't get taken for a ride. I know that I got a good salesperson. I got somebody I can call. And I can refer to us too as well. So it's 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 a different kind of game yeah. I play too. I'm easily sold. Sorry. <laughs> Me too. But especially with exactly what you just said, you make my like someone makes my life easy. Easy. Yes. And I'll my I'll just write you a check. I'll, here, here's my yeah. bank information. Just you know that that the, the process. I mean, my I, I think I do I do the same thing. Hopefully for my clients, and that that's that's really the goal. My, my clients just give me the keys to their house, and then they just like to know when I'm going to go in there. Yeah, that's <laughs> and they're it. like, okay, Ted, we're, we're leaving the house. You know, call us with the offer. Hopefully, uh, okay, so now they're going to tell me to wrap up soon. So. One thing that I, I, I not, may, may or may not have asked my other guests, but I'm going to ask you, what do you think, is it a, a mind trick or something in your brain that has assisted you in, in your life, in, in your work to, to be, to be very successful, knowledgeable, great? Like, what is it that, like, you know, give me that one gene or that, is it something of the way that you think? It's so tough because there's so many things that just get like thrown up against it at the same time. Um, you want to say passion, but it's not passion. Well, because you enjoy cars. I enjoy you, the cars. You enjoy the I sale. I enjoy the sale. I enjoy the hunt. I enjoy everything. Um, I always found myself able to talk myself out of anything when I was a kid. And I think that's kind of what helped me out. It's my aim. Um, acknowledge, ignore, and move on. Um, if there's a thing, I'm, I've always been very good at acknowledging the problem, kind of ignoring it, and then just sliding into a different different kind of world of where it says, yeah, you know what? This does suck, but look how great this is. And I've, I would say that that's probably where my best asset is. I like that. 
this does suck, but the byproduct, yeah. the, you know, the pros and cons list. Yeah. But acknowledge, ignore, and move on. Move on. And that's, that that's all. all lessons <laughs> that I, uh, I learned from everybody in the, in the field. Um, I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. And there are guys and girls out there that are way, way, way better than um, I could possibly ever even be. And it's, it's about collecting knowledge from everybody around you, having a good relationship from everybody around you, and, and building your own skill set and being yourself. See, I think that is also, that, that's one of the key, key factors that people underestimate. Collecting knowledge, seeing everything around you. You know, and that's where, you know, like uh, your, your car dealership, it's, it has, it's a building and people show up. And you, and you get to see people. You get to meet new people. Yeah. People show up to buy cars, of course. But just the interaction, I think that's a, that, that, that's what people underestimate. Being able to say, okay, wait, collecting knowledge. Like, I heard my manager on the phone. It was just, uh, I mean, I could I, you could make a funny skit about it. But at the end of the day, it was about perseverance. And you know what happened? That person called, you know, probably called up two days later and said, okay, what time is the open house? Because they went through their process in their own head mm -hmm. and they said, oh yeah, I am really selling my house. Yeah. It was just me speaking, you know. Yeah. And, and so, so yes. But you're I, on the yeah. phone with them. You're, you're going to be selling. Yeah. You know, there's something. They're not calling them. you. They could call up angry. They're calling you because they're motivated. Yep. That's, that's, there's that's, always that's, a reason. Yeah. There's always a reason behind the call. Acknowledge. Ignore. Ignore and move on. Move on. Okay. Learn so, that from PJ. From PJ. Yeah. Acknowledge. Ignore. I think that obviously I have a problem with ignoring. Yeah, so acknowledge, ignore, and move on. The other two I'm okay with. <laughs> well, you, you, you yeah. twist it into your own little, you know, yeah. your own little thing. But you know, for me, when I said before, I was like, hey, then any light switches hit for you. And and during my career over like the retail side of things, um, there's a lot of salespeople that have said like, I have like, hey, like, I noticed you were doing this on your walk around. Maybe try doing this. Hey, your negotiation. You're starting off on the wrong foot. Maybe you should put this into your vocabulary. Oh, see, that's what I envy about all my coaches, whether it was CrossFit or uh, or Orange Theory. I loved it. I really appreciate appreciated when it was there was they were so knowledgeable so in in there that they could make a one adjustment. Yes, I forgot how, like one of my my favorite CrossFit coach. He like said, Ted. Uh, like, I forgot how, what he said, but it was just like such a minor adjustment. I was like, oh, wow, that whole thing feels so different now. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like your shoulder isn't supposed to be like upside yeah. down or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like they, they like someone that could see that it's just, a, it, it's not an overhaul. It's just a tweak. Just a little, just yep. tweak it. And then as time goes on, you tweak again or you tweak again. And you find your own framework that works best for you within it. Sometimes it's like the... You have to also be very open to taking a little bit of criticism and you got to be open to taking a little bit of advice. And a lot of new salespeople seem to like really have trouble doing that because they look on the Instagram reels. You're the second person. The TikTok reels. A mortgage person said the same thing to me. And I, wait, um, am I just on a, uh, on a different planet? Why would a new person have trouble taking advice? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Shouldn't you it know? be the other way around? I, couldn't t I, I would say, you know what, Rob at... 23 years old was a different Rob at, at 33, you know? So, you know, I, I can't say that going back as if I was giving myself advice at that time, I wouldn't even know how I would take it then either. When people gave you advice, did you always know who to listen to and who not to listen to? Yes. That's genetic. I see it. I know it. I've, I've experienced it. I knew I was supposed to take advice from so-and-so, but not so-and-so. No, well, I always observed. I've always been seeing what everybody else was doing on the floor. And my mentor always said the same thing. You need to know what everybody else is doing on the floor and see where you're going to land. If somebody's making more phone calls than you and you're looking on that board and you say, you know what? They sold 10 more cars than me this month. Maybe I should make more phone calls. Right. Maybe you're making more phone calls and you're not getting the responses that you're getting. Your call of action is really not there. You're leaving a lot of messages. But the messages you're leaving aren't sufficient enough for a call back either. So that person that maybe was making that 300 phone calls a month walked by my desk one day and said, hey, I, uh, I noticed you're leaving a lot of messages. Maybe you should try the, uh, have you given up yet? Have you heard of that one yet? Have you given up on this? And once I started the have you given up on this, all of a sudden it's, hey, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I know. It's annoying. I totally get it. It's the fifth message I've left you. 
I just want to know, have you completely given up on the C-Class? If so, please just call me back and let me know. I can make sure I can take you off the list. It's almost like a little bit of a, even if they did get a new car, they're going to call me and say, hey, Rob, you know what? It looks like we decided to move forward with so-and-so. Oh, well, congratulations. I got a phone call back on my five left messages now. And so it's a win. It's a win. It's a win. It's a soft win, but it's a win. Have you taken delivery of that vehicle yet? Well, no, we just left a deposit. Oh, well, good news is it looks like there's an incentive on my C-Class right now. I'll speak to the manager now. If I can get this payment down another $50, would you still consider my vehicle? Well, you know what, Rob? Maybe. See what you can do. All of a sudden, I reopened the door on them. So, Suddenly you kept the football moving. Yeah, you, you always got to try to ask. Oh, it's always worth an ask. You're going to get a no. You're going to get a yes. I'd rather get a no, personally. I prefer a no than a yes, because yeses, to me, kind of feel like more of a, all right, leave me alone, kind of. Mm. Oh, do you need a new call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if it worked out, yeah, 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 call me, kind of deal. I'd rather get the, hey, you know what? No, Rob, no, I'm sorry. I'm not into it. Well, what about it isn't making you into it? Is it the color? I have something that I can play off of a little bit and kind of follow up with a what if. Okay. Does this how? come from, do you, I, I know my answer, but if, uh, uh, do you think that that level of, because it's a level of skill to be able to keep working it, to, to know to like be like, you know, to, and it's not about not giving up. It's about the ability to just, you know, constantly figure out, okay, wait, make a left, make a right, make a left, you know, okay, let's, and you're figuring it out. Is that, learned and is it and do you think it's learned because of all the knowledge you have over the course um, of the last 20 years i would say it's more i would say it's more learned than anything because you you don't start off immediately knowing how to build your own framework on how to lead a conversation into a sale and not all conversations lead to sales and that's just the reality of it you know a lot of guys would be like well i'm the toughest i'm the this i'm the that well, yeah, that's great and all. You might be an aggressive salesperson to make a lot of sales, but your grosses are probably on the low because you've probably given a lot up in your salesmanship. Same um, thing with our industry. Yeah, so it's, it, any salespeople, you can pump them out, but you're not getting a lot of gross. It's something that takes experience in of saying, I've made this many phone calls. I ran into this situation before, and I've had the chance and opportunity to actually have advice from somebody else that helped me build that framework up. So I would say it's more of something you learn over time and kind of learning how to massage a deal or massage something into the works of things. It exactly. doesn't always turn out, but it's always worth the the what if. Well, what if it were to work? What if we decided to do this? And you start getting them thinking and everyone starts thinking and you know what? It could lead to a sale sometimes. It could lead to the appointment. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna try something else different. Now. You got anything else? Maybe a little bit cheaper. I'm considering I'll do something smaller. Because yeah. so at the end something. of the day, you can't. You're never gonna hit if you don't swing. Exactly. So exactly. You, you need something. If you're gonna take the swing, you might as well hit something. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that that pretty much sells it. Says it sells it all. And sells it all. All right. I'm gonna have like one liner after one liner <laughs> on one of these. So anyway, this is uh, so. Thanks, Rob. You got it, man. Thank you. Man. I appreciate us. you okay. having me. Thank you. I had uh, a lot of fun. You too. Uh, and this is uh, the Real Ted G podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube.